Today we're going to look at an interesting geometry problem. So I found this problem in a list of Hungarian contest problems and it's numbered C1081 if you want to look for that. I'll put a link in the description as well. So the problem reads as follows. Two regular polygons are said to be matching if double the interior angle of one is equal to triple the exterior angle of the other. And our goal is to find all pairs of matching polygons. Okay, so there's a really only one fact that will allow us to solve this pretty easily, and it's this fact down here which says the interior angle of a regular n-gon is n minus two over n times 180 degrees. And this is like a pretty common fact that you could just state if you're actually doing one of these math contests. But we're gonna go ahead and prove this common fact, mostly because I'm American and it's well known that Americans are kind of bad at geometry in the world kind of like problem solving scene. So I like the idea of making this as self-contained of a video as possible. And that includes like putting some geometry proofs in here that maybe aren't as well known to Americans as are to other people from other countries. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So um, this fact will follow from the following statement, and that is the sum of the interior angles of an n-gon um, is um, n minus 2 times 180. So if we can prove that, then obviously there are n interior angles and they all have equal angle measure in a regular n-gon. So that makes the each angle of a regular n-gon equal to this quantity. So if we can prove this, then we're okay. And we're actually gonna prove this fairly carefully. Again, like I said, we're gonna do this just kind of for completeness. This is something you could state in a math contest. And we're gonna do this by induction starting at n equals three, that'll be our base case. So in other words, a triangle. Okay, good. So let's say we've got this triangle right here. And let's go ahead and name the angle. So maybe we'll name this one alpha, we'll name this one beta, and we'll name this one gamma. So the first important step is to use the fact that any line and any point not in that line can be used to create a unique parallel line through this point that's parallel to this. So let's go ahead and use that to create this parallel line. Great. And then let's extend these sides of the triangle into line segments. So we can go ahead and do that. So we can extend that into a line, we can extend that into a line, and that into a line. And we know that this line is parallel to this line. But now we can just use some fairly common results about angle measures. And I know that I'm proving this, but I'm not gonna prove those, but you have to stop at some point, and maybe these are more well known than the proof that the sum of the angles of a triangle is uh, 180. So that fact is well known, but maybe the proof isn't as well known. So that's gonna make this angle up here gamma, that's gonna make this angle over here alpha, and that's gonna make this angle over here beta. But since this creates a straight line, we know that alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 180. But that's the sum of the angles of this triangle. But that's exactly equal to 3 minus 1 times 180, which is exactly what we needed. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work from this. So let's make our induction hypothesis. In other words, we're gonna suppose this is true for some k gon, and then consider a k plus one gon. So I'll draw a k plus one gon in the following way. So let's say we have, so I'll put some dots there. Good. And so let's say this is the vertex number one, this is vertex number two, three, four, and then this is vertex number k, and this is vertex number k plus one. So now we have a k plus one gone. Now what I want to do is triangulate this thing. So in other words, we're going to take this triangle off of the k plus one gone, and that gives us this k gone right here. Great. And now we know that the angle measures in pink, 
So I'll just draw that like this, plus the angle measures in blue equal the angle measures of the whole K plus one gone. So let's say this is K plus one gone angle sum. Great. And so that's obvious because notice the only thing that could go weird here is this angle right here, but this angle right here is the sum of the blue angle and the pink angle, so we're okay. But by our induction hypothesis, we know that the angle measures of the stuff that are, is in pink is given by K minus 2 times 180 by our induction hypothesis. And then the angle measure of the stuff given by blue is just 180 because it's a triangle, and that's our base case. So notice that this adds up to K minus 1 times 180, which is obviously um, what we need it to be for a K plus 1 gone to follow this formula. Okay, great. So now we've proved the only fact that we need in order to do this. And now we're ready to get going on the solution. So let's suppose we have an M gone and an N gone that are matching. So suppose we have a pair of polygons that are matching and one of, is an, one of them is an M gone and a matching N gone. So what that tells us is that the interior angle of our M gone times 2 is equal to 3 times the exterior angle of our n gone. Remember, that is the definition of these guys being matching. But now we can recall how an exterior angle relates to an interior angle. And in fact, an exterior angle is equal to 180 minus the interior angle. And uh, we can see that by the following picture, just in the way that an exterior angle is defined. So let's consider this pentagon. You can consider it just like an n-gon. So the exterior angle is this angle which I'm making in blue, which is very clearly um, supplementary to this interior angle, making it 180 minus the interior angle. Okay, so let's see the equation that this sets up. So now we have twice m minus 2 over m times 180 equals 3 times the exterior angle of an n gone. So that's going to be 180 minus the interior angle. So we have n minus 2 over n times 180. So now this is the equation that we need to solve. Well, notice there's 180s in all of the terms. So let's go ahead and cancel those. So we can cancel this down to a 1, cancel that one out, and then maybe also multiply by m times n to clear the denominators. So let's see what we get when we do that. Okay, so here we're going to get 2 times n times m minus 2. So that's what's left over after canceling on the left-hand side. And now here we're going to have 3 uh, times mn is what hits this one, and then minus m times n minus 2. Okay. But now let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice that's going to be 2mn minus 4n equals 3mn uh, minus another 3mn and then plus 6m. Okay. So that's what we get from multiplying all of that out. So notice uh, this guy and this guy cancel. And then also notice we've got a greatest common factor in all of these terms of 2. So I can go ahead and multiply this entire thing by a half in order to simplify. That's going to give me mn minus uh, 2n equals 3m. I can factor an n out of the left-hand side, and that gives me n times m minus 2 equals 3m, or in other words, I have n equals 3m over m minus 2. Okay, great. So now what I'll do is I'll bring this up, and then we'll finish off. 
Okay, so let's catch up to where we were. We said that if we have twice the interior angle of an m-gon is equal to three times the exterior angle of an n-gon, that gives us the following equation relating n and m. Now the next thing we want to do is do polynomial division on this right hand side, which since these are linear polynomials we can do with a trick. So I'm going to rewrite the top as three times m minus two, but doing that I just subtracted six from the entire numerator, which means I can add 6 to the entire numerator make sure I didn't do anything at all. So notice, if I distribute this through, I get negative 6 plus 6, which arrives back at where we were. But now we can uh, break this into pieces. So we have 3m minus 2 over m minus 2 plus 6 over m minus 2. In other words, we have 3 plus 6 over m minus 2. Okay. But let's recall that n was a natural number and m was a natural number as well. In fact, they're both at least three given the fact that we're talking about regular polygons in this case. But anyway, what we have here is this tells us that 6 over m minus 2 needs to be a natural number. In other words, m minus 2 divides evenly into 6. But that gives us only a few possibilities. So case number one is m minus two equals one. And so that tells us m equals three. But then if m equals three, you can plug that into this equation and we'll say that n equals nine, which gives us our first pair. So our first pair is a um, triangle and a nine gone. And then our next pair will be m minus two equals two. So 2 divides evenly into 6, but notice that's going to tell us that m equals 4, but then if m equals 4, we'll get n equals, let's see, it's going to be 3 plus 6 over 2, so n is going to be equal to 6. So that means our next pair is a square and a hexagon. Now uh, let's look at the last two pairs. So we have um, m minus 2 could be equal to 3, which makes m equal to 5. But then if m equals 5, we have 3 plus 6 over 3. So we have n equals so we have n equals 5 as well. So two pentagons will work in this case. And then finally, we have m minus two equals uh, six. So that's the largest number that can divide evenly into six, but that is going to give us m equals eight, but then you can check that n equals four. So our last possibility is having an octagon and a square. And these represent all the possibilities for these matching polygons. Okay, that's a good place to stop.